Hey guys, so before this video begins, I wanted to give kind of an overview to the course that I'm gonna start. Uh, let's start with the basics. So this is a advanced function series. This is going to be covering advanced Minecraft functions and simple behavior packs that pair with functions. That means do not come into this unless you have pretty proficient command experience or it's not gonna make sense. If you wanna jump in the deep end, I understand that. I have been there, I do that sometimes, less now than I used to. You can, but if you're gonna do that, try to understand things conceptually. Try to grasp the ideas of what I'm saying even if you don't understand how the very specific works. That's what I recommend if you're just gonna jump into this. I will be providing a variety of assets that I've created. Uh, dare I say libraries um, pr they're pretty cool you can use them a lot most of the code for references uh, gain experience looking at advanced Minecraft functions break them down do whatever you want with them uh, the biggest thing is going to be the Nexus system the Nexus system is a data structure that I created using functions that you can download and use and I might need to modify it but it's pretty cool and we'll cover that not today if you're wondering if I'm qualified, I will give you a brief overview of some of the things I've done, If assuming you have not seen my videos. I have made um, custom entities where you can set their scoreboard to change their stats and then give them a tag to reset their stats, it changes their skins, pretty much all their stats including loot tables. You can create an entity in game using that system. I also created that same system for players so you can create your own ranks you can download the system that I created and you know even create a level up system if you wanted you know like okay hey at level two you can choose option one two or three level people up cool stuff but my biggest creation is the world edit system which uses thousands of lines of code it is a fully functional just a moment fully functional system that uses commands and a little bit of behavior packs and it is the most advanced world edit system that I have seen that doesn't use scripts and really just the most advanced one that I've seen on Bedrock. Um, I might be wrong about that, but I've looked pretty good and it's at least up there. In terms of the course structure, it's basically just gonna be me doing one take and running through a concept. It's not gonna be perfect. I'm not gonna edit it very much and I'm and then anything I miss, I will cover at the end and be like, all right, cool. So it, blah, blah, blah. I said all these things. That is good. This is the conclusion. Maybe I won't do a wrap up. Maybe I will. I missed this, this, and that. And I will often be speaking to someone during the video because I do better when teaching someone who's actually there instead of just the camera or in this case, screen recorder. Some videos you can expect are Nexus data systems, automatic command execution, clickable functions, loops and loops, or loopception is what I'm probably going to call it, uh, toggles, and probably some more, but I haven't thought of this all, and it's not all planned. This is not going to be a immensely structured thing. Um, I'm going to create some structure so it's ideally helpful, and I'm... I won't break down how I'm going to make the videos too much. That's, yeah, ask me if you want. Yeah, so besides that, yeah, let's start the video. I just, the video is about, I just do a run through, and this, this first one's a little chaotic and much longer than it should be. So I uh, hope you appreciate the series and enjoy it and learn stuff from it. If you have ideas, let me know. And yes, okay, let's start. Check, check, hello, are we echoing? Uh, I think we're good. All right, cool, I'm doing the intro. What's up guys, it's Banjo. Welcome back to another video. Uh, today, we're gonna be doing the first episode of a series of called Advanced Minecraft Functions. I looked around YouTube and I saw, ah, uh, thanks Minecraft. I looked around YouTube and I found pretty much no advanced function videos on the platform, so I'm gonna hopefully be making some pretty decent videos. Um, let me know feedback of what you think of these videos and how I can structure better because I, as you guys know, I'm uh, just learning how to do YouTube and stuff. So for now, I'm going to be winging the videos with a general outline with Minecraft or someone else who is actually learning this stuff because I do better talking to people. 
let me know what you guys think and yeah let us comment get below what you think <laughs> let us get started yes all right cool so what <laughs> is the basics of functions what do you need to know about functions uh functions are a file that has lines of code every line it represents a command in minecraft normal minecraft command it could be a say command an execute command a fill command all of that it could be any of that stuff and it goes one line after the other every time you run the function um, the f file exists in a behavior pack if you don't know about behavior packs maybe I'll make another video about that but this is supposed to be advanced minecraft functions not um, basics this is the only time we're gonna be covering super basic things uh, I think also Minecraft try to keep the unnecessary conversation to a f fair minimum uh, when I start teaching you more directly that'll be good but for now let's let's keep let's keep it fairly minimum for now um, what was I saying yes it takes place in a behavior pack if you don't know how to do that probably look that up in another video because uh, that is not what we're covering here today I let me make sure I'm recording my whole screen yes I am cool you guys saw my little editor so yeah what else is on my list um so I like to format functions oh yeah no let's cover some use cases for functions I use functions as a what I call a framework for my world so commands that I want to constantly be firing that can be checking for things that could be executing a series of commands with a conditional of if this happens then do all this stuff I can be running an entire server software that normally you'd have to build with command blocks using functions and then you can download that pack onto other worlds that is an advantage that functions have is that they are downloadable my world edit system which is currently broken because of updates we don't talk about that it's fine uh, my world edit system <laughs> normally works with um, you know all across every, like all any world I mean it, it'll spawn in everything you see here and it'll, just, it'll spawn that in so it's not literally every world but you get the idea like generally it's downloadable in, in a common sense well, what are you breaking, Minecraft? What are you doing? Glass. Glass. Wow. Okay, cool. The more you know. Cool, cool. So, yes, they are used for a lot of things. Um, typically, you're going to want a function that executes constantly. That is kind of the... Well, I call it... Think of it as a control structure. This is what leads into other functions. Oh, yes. You can have functions inside of functions, and that is something we're going to be doing a lot. Inside of because the slash function command is a command in Minecraft, you can run that function in another function. And so there are certain commands that you only have to run once, and there are other commands that you want to run constantly. And then there's, of course, normal functions that, that like a command, a function that turns everyone who's on op, you know, to creative. And maybe you don't want to type in the whole command, so you turn it into a function. There's lots of use cases. We are going to be talking about the two main types. Oh, my phone turned off. That has my notes. Two main types of functions today. And I like to break it up into two things, a startup function and a framework function. So a startup function is a command that you have to run on when you start a world. It, may, it sets up everything. It either spawns structures, spawns entities, sets, it creates scoreboard objectives. It, it sets up everything so that, your, um, so that your other functions will operate and work. Also, Minecraft, if you could keep the typing a, a little quieter, that would be good. I typically have horrible <laughs> audio quality in my videos. And I need to stop doing that. <laughs> my favorite function is slash summon TNT. That is actually called the command, but you it could... <laughs> Um, but yes, yes, I definitely not a griefer. Hashtag definitely not a griefer. Yes, yes. <laughs> no, no. Do you want to join the world? Yeah, you can join the world, Kronos. You can check out the system. So yes, um, what else? So let me show you an example of a startup function. Let me get the... And I'm going to share screens with you, Minecraft, so you can see this as well. Okay, boom, boom, boom. We have a Discord, by the way. I made a video about it. Bam! There we are. Okay, so this is an example of a startup function right here. Um, this is a simple startup function. I created a system that has three armor stands, I believe, and one armor stand will rotate and teleport the second one, and the second one will rotate and teleport the third one in front of it, and then the third one will set blocks in front of it.
So for that to work, obviously if you're constantly teleporting armor stands that don't exist, that doesn't work. So then we have to make a startup function that spawns in the entities. This is like the dependencies. What like if you're an actual programmer, this will be real simple for you. These are the dependencies. What files and data you need to already exist in your world in order to do it. Can you see this? Uh Minecraft, can you see this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. So this kills the already existing ones, and this is in a, in a event that if you accidentally run this twice, you want to get rid of what your first stuff. That way, it doesn't bug out and trip out. Um, then I summon an armor stand with a with a piece of data that I can identify it by. Then I Penta. yep, and then I give it pendulum. Then I what what do I do? I summon another armor stand point one and point two. Boom, boom, boom. Um, I do this. Apparently, so for some reason, I have two of these. I built this a long time ago. I haven't looked at this code in a long time. To recap, this is a dependency. Everything that needs to exist in your world for the framework function to work. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Does that make sense, Minecraft? Yes. Framework function. This is a example of oh, my, kit, my old kit PvP framework function. This is everything that I want to have constantly executing and I will show you some examples. Um, this for immediately it fires the world edit framework which I did not main framework because at the time I did not um, I did not use this system of framework and startup functions but I do recommend it and if everyone on the platform could not that I expect this to go all over the platform but theoretically if everyone started using this method it would make other people's functions work pretty good at the same time there would also be cl clashes if with different behavior packs having the same function name so huh, maybe it's not the best I don't know I think it's I think it would be good okay so in this example, I said, okay, if a Nexus has a new ID that is not zero, give it a tag of parent. This links up to other functions that I run. I have to leave the party real quick. I'll be right back. Sounds good, Kronos. Okay. This links to other functions that will basically give a bunch of data. It'll spawn the, the it'll spawn a Nexus. Um, I guess this is that function. It's not another function. It'll spawn a Nexus and then execute on that Nexus with this guy that we have um, that is being scanned. Um, it'll it'll uh, execute on the guy that does, has a new ID of not zero. It'll and this isn't perfect code because if there was two at once, this would slightly break. Oh look, this is broken. Look at that. All right, had a interruption. I am back. So let's look at a use case, and I might even make functions. No, one thing at a time. Let's look at a use case. Yes. So this use case, I execute on world framework, which is an entity that I have that I execute most of my commands off of. Then I scoreboard player add timer t1. I do, and w when you have a repeating command block, there are, um, when you have a repeating command block, this fires 20 times a second. That is simple stuff. You guys already know that. Don't need to talk about that. My bad. Uh, so then when I say, then I execute on that same entity when they have timer t of 20, scoreboard add timer s of 1, and then when they don't have that, remove the second impulse, and then when they do have 20, add that, and then when they are at 20, because they have received the tag, and they will have that tag for one tick, I execute, um, oh, what is this? Okay, this is a, a different use that we are going to ignore because that does something a little more complicated that we don't need to talk about. Um, countdown. Oh yeah, so then this activates to for other. Um, this enables it so you can have a nexus that has a timer tag, and it will count. It'll count itself up in seconds just by having this tag anywhere in your world. So that's a that's like a functionality that you added. Like hey, if this if any entity that is a Pathfinder's, oh, that's not a Pathfinder's Nexus, my bad, um, has timer s count up, then give it timer s, or give it a scoreboard of timer s every second. Uh, but all this How is executed with wait? the weights, like pauses, yes. you mean? Yeah, it pauses it for the timer. Like you want you want it to stop counting, let's say? Yeah, ticks, yeah. Oh, ticks. Like a certain amount. You want, so, say your question again, say your question again. So like you execute commands one second later, more commands execute. Like, uh, so, like if you fire like a lot of commands, if you do a loop. Yeah. It, it fires like 
over 10,000 commands, then it crashes your game. So how do you how do you I, stop the limit of commands? I, I mean, like the weights, like stop it for like a oh. millisecond. If you want to stop or delay a command, what you do is you let's say, well, that's what I'm doing here. I'm delaying this command for 20 seconds. So then. Oh, you put it in the command. Yeah. So I execute. Uh, I add a scoreboard of one of a timer, let's say, and then I only execute the next commands when the timer. Let's say you want a 20, uh, a seven tick delay when the timer T is seven, and then I reset it using if it's above, if it's seven or above, right? Then reset it back to zero or one in this case, which I do, which I think this should technically be zero, not one. Now that I think about it, but that's all right. So then this has um, delay, and this fires the tag which you can execute upon in the world once every 20 ticks and then here I use that um, I use that system again I I except that now notice how you increase your timer s by one now with timer s equals 60 I add a minute I add one to the minute timer and then I remove the minute impulse and I had the same system with the impulse tags again you can execute upon these tags um, in your world so if you wanted a command to fire once every minute or a scoreboard to change once every minute you can link it to this guy in actual command blocks or other functions and it works and I continue this process all the way through to, it goes from minutes to hours and then even days I believe yes days and that is how the timer system works let's see what I have in my notes this is supposed to be okay I have basics every line of code it will be executed loops yes loops let's look at a simple loop yeah so that's that's pretty much the end of this video guys I already said these things so let me know what you would like to see I have some ideas and if you would like to stick around to see what we're gonna be doing in the future of this series also let me know I don't have everything planned out yet but there are some things and if you would like to see some examples of what a big startup function looks like stick around but other than that I will see you guys later and yeah Bye. Goodbye, Bye. probably, unless you're gonna Bye. be here later. Okay. Okay. Now they're now the people that are still here. This is for them now. Hello, people. Hello. I'm like the only person. You're the only person. <laughs> Everyone else dropped off by this point. That's funny. Um, quite possible early I, days. Yes. I lost. I like. I. I got, I got confused what you what you were saying half the time. <laughs> Bummer. Yeah. Okay. So if we look up here. I spelled generation wrong. Okay, I have Nexus installed as well. Okay, so that. this is an example of MC generation. This should be called startup, but I didn't do this yet uh, back then. So I, this is literally everything I have to do starting off. I have to create, I set the game rule. I set all of these scoreboard objectives. I, I wish I in this video, I wish I would have um, showed my world edit system. I, I'm not positive it's a working right now, but that's an example of what you can do with functions. It's like hundreds on hundreds of lines. I have to create the timer scoreboards. Um, this is a. Why not use bridge? It comes with all auto corrections. Yeah, I don't know. I've, I'm old fashioned, I guess. Well, you old. <laughs> I'm trying to figure out how to do the startup functions, because none of the functions like I have your pack in. And there's way too many functions. It's like <laughs> this was for me. You can't find your own. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of functions. So <laughs> I can't find my own. this function d does a lot. It gives you it gives you the world edit permission. It summons an armor stand. It centers the armor stand. It runs a bunch of fill commands. It what else does this do? This is the Nexus 31 by 31 system. Um, oh yeah. So right here. Yeah, this will link to other functions that will create a giant grid that's spaced out. It'll create a grid where you can put your builds and then you can turn those builds into spawn eggs really easily within like one command. You'd be like scoreboard add this with the name of that 22 and then boom, it links up to the system and you can spawn it all over your world. It's very cool. Um, and it turns out it's actually better than the structure system because the structure system doesn't center your builds and it you can't do masked like you can't it it 
remembers all the air blocks. My system doesn't. How do you, how do, you do the facing part? Or oh, that's like a, a execute thing. Do the the facing part? Like, uh, that's just a TP command, right? TP at S tilde 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 facing at E blah blah blah. blah. Um, oh, you mean like, yeah, well, describe what you mean. Like, just how you do in all the function bits. I know it's using an end to teleport. Oh yeah, so I'm using a mixture of entities um, being teleported and um, and scoreboards, and then I'll use fill commands, and that creates everything you saw at the beginning of the video. Uh, this is the 31 by 31 function. I could have com made these work differently, and I didn't. In this case, I didn't have startup functions for each initialization. I just put it here because this is all part of that. It doesn't matter. Then here's the brush channels that I made. They have its own function. Um, it generates in uh, using loops saying, hey, set this to, here's a little system I'll explain. If you have a scoreboard of value of five and you subtract one and then do something every time and you repeat until it is, until it is no longer above one or one or above, I should say. Then what you do is once that function finishes, it goes back to the previous function to try to finish that function. And then in that function, you, um, I'm, I'm kind of butchering this, but you then reset it to five and rerun that function. But once you set it to five, you set a secondary scoreboard to, let's say, you remove the secondary scoreboard of two. Um, you, I mean, you remove a, the secondary scoreboard, I'm running out of brain cells, bear with me. You remove the secondary scoreboard value, you remove one, and then you redo that function. And then this means you can have loops inside of loops inside of loops. You want to do the first one seven times, the, sec the second one five times, and then the third one, um, I don't know, five times again, which equals a total of five times five times seven, which is 175 different times you'll loop. And you can change every one of those scoreboards. That is something that we are going to cover, loops inside of loops, in the next video. But hopefully that, you know, helped a little bit. Anyways, this creates all of the structures. Looks like... Here, I did not want to loop it. Is that? Okay, so it's, all, it's basically all using fills. And I'm guessing Fill. for the circles. Is the circles, are you, are you using layering? Oh, the circles, yeah. I build the circles by hand. I, I didn't want to create a, a thing like that. Well, now what I could do is I could use MC functions to generate in brushes for my world edit system, but I'm getting off track for, for this video. Okay. Um, yeah, then it summons the world framework, and then... Sometimes in a startup function, you're going to want to do what is what is called, like a, I don't know what it's called, I haven't named it yet, but you basically test for, are these entities in your world already existing? If so, do not do this next part. Uh, and that is what I do over there. And then there's different modules. In my uh, function pack that I created, there are different modules that do different things. Custom entity systems where you can customize scoreboards linking to stats. Is that works for both players and the custom entity that I created. Uh, that is a module and that you want to organize that by like yeah, files. Entity world. files, Nexus files, yeah, pendulum so files. I don't get anything inside them. Yeah, and that's alright, we'll cover that in Minecraft. We will cover There's it. If you can learn these things Yeah, there are okay, it's, it's a lot. I had to invent it. It took a lot of it took a lot of time to figure this it's, stuff it's out. Basically it, it's just some <laughs> it's my child. It's my child. Yeah, which is why I was skeptical to even release it. Um, but anyways, guys, that is actually it. Um, this is a this is confirming. Hey, the function ran. So, thanks for watching. Thanks for sticking it out. You guys are probably in like the ten percent of people who actually finish this video. Probably less, honestly. That's how it goes. Let me know things you would like to learn or you think would be good to be covered, and I will talk to you.